Hello friends, welcome to our broadcast, Limitless Life. I am your host, Larry Hutton. Glad to have you with me. Uh, I, I'm just thrilled. I get to travel all over the world all the time. Been traveling for many, many years, decades, and, and uh, get to meet people all over the world. But then I get to come on TV and go to places that I've never traveled to. And I, I, it's so fun hearing. We want to hear from you. If, if you're a regular uh, viewer, you watch us regularly, uh, send us an email or send us a Facebook message or uh, whatever, get in contact with us, uh, tweet me, uh, Instagram me, whatever. But we want to hear from you and let us know what, what the program has done for you. Let us know what the Word of God has done for you because that's what we're sharing. <clears throat> we're always sharing the good Word, the Word that's going to put people over in life. I found out years ago that God, God is good, His Word is good, and if I live by His Word, then I live good. <laughs> that goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. And that's the kind of God we serve. Um, he dwells with us. He lives with us. He walks with us. And He'll walk in us. And He'll walk through us, uh, taking us, lead us, and guide us in the paths of rightness, righteousness. And, and it's for His namesake. I mean, he wants, he wants us blessed because of who He is. He's, he's just a good God. He's a God of love, God of mercy, a God of kindness. And in the New Testament, that's the kind of God we serve, a God of grace, a God of goodness, a God of truth. And that's who we are talking about on this program. So we've been doing a series on this program. If you just joined us, it's a series about uh, He was, talking about Jesus, what He was, and then I am. I am now what He is. As He is, so are we in this world, the Bible says. So we got to learn the things that God says. We're looking at God's Word because James likens God's Word to a mirror and that we can look in the mirror and it reflects what God says we look like, what God says we have, what God says we can do, all about what God says instead of our own, what I call our own stinking thinking. You know, we can think wrong things of who we are, wrong things of what I have, wrong things what I can do. We think f failure and everything else, whereas God has a whole different viewpoint of us. And it's always good. He, he always wants to say good things about us. So we looked at 18 things that God said we are. First of all, we won't take time to reiterate all of those as far as in detail, but let me just go over them real quick. You're a spirit being. You're an eternal being. God made you just like Him. He put you in His class of being, higher than angels, higher than everything else, higher than animals, higher than everything else. You're a spirit, an eternal being, a God-created being. Uh, created in His image and likeness. Number two, you're a son of God, you're a daughter of God, you're a child of God, and you're part of God's immediate family. Number three, you're a servant of God. Number four, you're a friend of God. Number five, you're an heir of God. Number six, you are the righteous, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Number seven, you are the chosen of God, hand-picked, hand-selected, you're part of His 18. Number eight, you're God's representative and ambassador of His government. Number nine, you're anointed. Number 10, you are a love being. Number 11, you're redeemed. Number 12, you're holy, or royalty rather. Number 13, you're holy. Number 14, you are purchased and protected by God in His possession. Number 15, you are the temple of God. Number 16, you are the light of the world. Number 17, you are the salt of the earth. Number 18, you are an overcomer. You're more than a conqueror. And of course, you could go on and on. There's more things, but we're, we're trying to get this image inside those of you that are watching so you start seeing yourself differently. And then it gives you boldness to live right. It gives you confidence that you can overcome the things in life that are trying to overcome you. So we talked about those things. Then we've been talking about four things that God says we have. All of those things are, are who God says you are. Now we're dwelling on things God says that we have because of who you are because you're His child, because you're a, a part of the family of God, uh, you've been born again, you're a child of His, and so because of that, now He says you have a lot of things that are part of your possession, things that belong to you, things you have. Well, we found out we have, you have God, the Almighty One, the Creator of the universe living inside you. You have the same anointing in you that Jesus had in Him. You have Zoe. That's the essence and nature and life of God living inside you. And then you have, which is what we've been discussing the last couple of programs, you have God on your side. I've been kind of excited. I didn't know I was going to spend a couple programs on this one thing, but it's kind of excited me because I can see the need for this as I've been sharing all these scriptures. The need, because I 
talk to people and travel all the time and meet people in churches all over the world, I can see the way they talk and the things they're facing and, you know, the things they ask for prayer for and things like that. They need to know God is for them, not against them. They need to know God is on their side. And when you really believe that, it does give you confidence. And that's what we want. We want you to have confidence. And so uh, let's just pick up. We ended last time in Psalms, but we're going to pick up in Isaiah this time. Isaiah chapter 12 and verse number 2. And we're talking about God being on our side. He's for us. He's not against us. He's a shield. He's a protector. He's our strength. He's our high tower. So many things that we've already looked at. But look, let's look at Isaiah 12, 2. It says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He has also become my salvation. So this is a really cool psalm, our, our Isaiah uh, statement here from Isaiah. He said, God is my salvation. So you ought to be saying that. Remember what we learned about salvation. Salvation is an all-inclusive term. I remember years ago going to a, a T.L. Osborne meeting. And uh, I don't know if you ever heard T.L. before he went to heaven. But he, he was so powerful. He, he spoke with such simplicity and yet so powerfully that he could say the simplest thing and it would just draw you in. You know, he could say, God loves you. And you'd go, yes, he does. I mean, just grip, you know, because it was, it was spoken with, with conviction and with power and with anointing and with love. And it was just powerful. Anyway, he said this about salvation. He said, salvation is the sum total of all the blessings of God bestowed on man by God in Christ through the Holy Spirit. I like that. Salvation is the sum total of all the blessings of God bestowed on man by God in Christ through the Holy Spirit. So salvation, when this verse says, Behold, God is my salvation, then get the bigger picture of what that means. He's not just, okay, he saved me from hell and I'm going to go to heaven when I die. Okay, well, that's great. That's, that's number one, uno. That's first. That's, that's since you're going to live eternally after you leave this body. So whether you live 100 years or 175 like Abraham, let's say you, you, you live a long time, but then you go. Well, guess what? Your life after is going to be millions of years and tens of millions of years. And so you, you definitely want to be going to the right place there. So God is my salvation. He's the salvation of my spirit. That's the, the inward man. That's the real me. So yes, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven when I die. But God is my salvation. He's the salvation of my emotions. Yeah, he's the salvation of my feelings. Yeah, he's the salvation of my hormones. <laughs> yeah, he's the salvation of my body. He's the salvation of my finances. God, you are the salvation of my everything, right? So we got to look at these and, and just believe what God says. That's why uh, Isaiah goes on to say, I will trust. Well, you've got to trust. He is your salvation. And not be afraid. You know, trust or faith, believing in God, is the opposite of not being afraid. Fear and faith don't go together. When one comes in, the other leaves. When the other comes in, the other leaves. He said, I will not be afraid. Kind of, kind of sounds like we have a choice, don't we? Yeah, if Jesus said it over and over, don't fear, don't fear, don't fear, and he did. And then Isaiah says right here, I will not. Kind of sounds like we have a choice in the matter, whether we're going to be in worry, which is a form of fear, whether we're going to be stressed out about things, form of fear. God says, or Isaiah says, God's my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. So that means you and I can trust and not be afraid. Fear is probably the number one thing that stops everybody from living the abundant life. They're afraid that they can't do something. They're afraid somebody doesn't like them. They're afraid that they're going to get what their mother or father or grandmother or grandfather got and died from. They're afraid that, that they're going to lose all their money and so they keep holding on so tightly they're squeeze, squeezing the copper out of the penny. <laughs> they're, they're afraid of one thing after another and, and they worry about this and I'm afraid my kids aren't going to do this and I'm afraid this. and It's just fear, 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 fear. And friends, we need to learn to trust God. God, you are my salvation. I will not fear. I will trust, Lord. It goes on to say, For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. 
Now that's interesting. He's my strength, but not just my strength, my song. Kind of sounds like I'm going to be singing. Well, the only buddy that, people that walk around whistling and singing, singing are usually happy people, some people that got some joy, uh, a pep in their step. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so if, if God's my strength and my song, then, oh, I can be singing, Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. I mean, I can sing songs about him and he has become my salvation. It starts with salvation, ends with God. You're the God of my salvation. The end of the verse, he's become my salvation. Why? Because of what he said in the middle of the two. He said, I'm going to trust and not be afraid. God, you're Jehovah. You're my strength and I'm going to sing about it. Well, if you're going to sing about it, you know what that means? You're declaring things. You're singing, the Lord is my strength. He is my salvation. He is my comforter. He is my helper. He is my everything. In Him I move and, and, and have my being. I trust in Him. I live in Him. I do everything with God. Become God-minded in everything you do. Get up in the mornings like we've said in previous programs and, and look at that mirror and say, God lives in that man. The Almighty Creator lives in that man and He's on my side. God, you're on my side. And then you'll do like I do every day. Almost every day of my life I get up and I'll say, God, something good is going to happen to me today. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just continually say that because I believe it because God's on my side. And I have His salvation. His salvation is His healing and His, and His miracle working power and His goodness and His peace and His joy and His gentleness and His kindness and His faith and His faithfulness and His and his self-control and just everything that God has for me and is for me. Praise God. Let's look at one more before we go on here. Um, or maybe a couple more. Now let's look at one more here. Let's go to Isaiah. We're there in Isaiah 12. Let's go to Isaiah 40. This happens to be one of my favorite passages in Isaiah 40 here. So let's look at this. We're talking about God is on our side. God is for us. If I got God on my side, the sides are stacked, then why would I have to fear What's going to happen in my life? What's going to happen? Oh, what about retirement? What about this pain in my body? What about, no, wait a minute, God's on my side. God's on my side. So let's look here at Isaiah 40, because Isaiah had some really cool things to say here. He said, um, and he's speaking prophetically here. He's speaking like as though God's speaking through him. And this is what Isaiah said, or really this is what God said to you and me. Have you not known? Have you not heard? that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth does not faint and neither is weary. <laughs> there is no searching in his understanding. You know what that means? That means when you and I come into a situation where we just don't know what to do, God's not going up there going, oh, myself. <laughs> what, what, what? Now that went right over some of you said, what do, what do we do? We go say, oh my God, but what's God going to say? Oh myself, <laughs> look at that situation they're in right now. I just don't know what to do. Hey Jesus, hey Holy Spirit, come on, let's have a, let's have a staff meeting here and figure out something. No, there's no searching in his understanding. It says it right here. In other words, guess what? He already knows. He's already got it figured out. In fact, he already set a plan in place to bring you out and push you ahead and put you forward and keep you going. He's already got it all in place. No searching. He doesn't have to search out his understanding to figure it out. Isn't that good news? So, so he, he doesn't faint. He's not growing weary or tired. There's no searching in his understanding. Look what it says now in the next verse. Talk about you and me. He gives power to the faint. Come on, all of us in life have, have come up against things where you feel like, I'm just talking what you feel like. You feel like fainting. You feel like you're about to give up. You can't, you can't keep going. But, but God says he gives power to the faint. And to them that ha have no might, he increases strength. We've been looking over and over the last couple of programs, and here we are in another program, finding these scriptures that talk about God gives us strength. Do you think maybe we ought to believe it? <laughs> I think we ought to believe God gives us strength. And then this one says he increases strength. So that means, all right, God, I already have strength. And now you're going to even give me more. You're going to increase my strength. Yeah, he gives power to the faint to them who uh, have no mighty increases strength. Even the youth. Now watch what he's, he uses a natural example here in verse 30. Even the youth are going to faint and be weary. 
So in other words, they, they can look to their natural, they're young, they're strong, you know, and they've got stamina because they're young. Even the youth are going to faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. So God says natural human strength is not going to cut it. Not when you have to face all the things in life. And I've seen that through life. Man, I've seen people that were great athletes and, you know, strong and just everything going for them. And all of a sudden something happens, whether it was an accident that put them in a wheelchair, or whether it was a disease that, you know, put them in a position where they couldn't do it, play their particular sport or something anymore. And all of a sudden they're, they're not the big, strong, confident people anymore. Why is that? Because their confidence is in themselves, friends. You and I need to put our confidence in God. He's the one that increases strength. He's the one that doesn't faint or grow weary. He's the one that there's no searching in his understanding. So since he's in me, why don't I search him and get that understanding from him rather than looking through horses or chariots, in other words, through mankind and through humanity. Even the youth are going to faint and be weary, and the young men are going to utterly fall. But, now look at this next verse, one of my favorites, verse 31, Isaiah 40, 31. But they that wait on the Lord, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run. This is talking about th those of us in previous verses, the ones that we feel like we're going to faint. We feel like we have no more might left. Uh, even youth and, that are fainting and wearying and young men that are falling. He says, all of a sudden, now wait a minute, when you, when you start waiting on the Lord, we'll talk about that in just a minute, waiting on the Lord, then you renew your strength and then you mount up with wings as eagles. Hmm. What do eagles do? They fly over all the problems, right? And then it says, you shall run and not be weary. You can run and not be weary. Well, just a few minutes before, you were about to faint, about to give up, about to quit, no strength. Now said, because you did what you did, and this is what we're going to get into. He said, you did what you did. Now you can run and not be weary, and you can walk and not faint. I can run the race that God has set before me, and I will not get tired doing it. And I can walk by faith. I can walk the walk through life, all the things that God has me do, and I won't get tired. I won't faint. I won't fall. Why? Because I'm waiting on the Lord. I'm waiting. This word wait is an interesting Hebrew word. It means to join yourself to. It doesn't mean to just sit idly by, okay, uh, twiddle my thumbs and whistle. No, that's not what it means. I'm just going to wait on the Lord and hopefully He comes through. No, to join yourself to. How do you join yourself to the Lord? With your faith. The way you joined yourself to Him when you got saved. How did you join yourself to the Lord? <laughs> you called on Jesus and you realized He's your Savior. You confessed Him. You believe He's alive, that He rose from the dead. Yeah, He died for you. He shed His blood for you. But then you believe He's alive. So you believe He rose and you called on Him as your Lord and Savior. And you know what you did? You joined yourself to Him with your heart and with your mouth. That's how you joined yourself to Him. That's how you continually join yourself to Him. With your heart you're believing in what He says, and then you speaking what He says that causes you to be joined to the Lord. Amen. His yoke is easy, by the way, so you want to join. Get yoked up with Jesus, right? Um, he says, those that wait upon the Lord, you, you join to the Lord. Then it says, you renew your strength. That word renew in the Hebrew means to exchange. So you give Him your weakness, He gives you His strength. But you know what happens when you give him as your weakness? He takes it and all of a sudden it becomes strength. <laughs> because there's no weakness in him. There's no sin in him. There's no weakness in him. There's no failure. So he'll take all of your and my messes, give you all of himself and all of his blessings, take all of our messes, and then because it becomes part of him, it's all blessing. <laughs> all, all of it disintegrates. All of it disappears. It's like... All of that darkness that was part of our life, uh, Jesus took, and He's light, and so light dispels darkness, and there's none of it left. It dissipates, disappears, leaves. That's, that's what happens when we wait, when we join ourselves to the Lord. And so that's why I do this all the time on a regular basis, no matter what area of life I'm facing a problem 
I start taking God's Word. I put it in my heart. I keep it in my heart, so I keep listening to God's Word on a daily basis. I speak God's Word on a daily basis. Then when I face the difficulties of life, I speak what God's Word says. What does God's Word say? So I speak this regarding my body, if I feel pain in the body, regarding my finances, if we, if we need finances, if I, um, regarding a relationship, regarding my marriage, I want to be a better husband. So I'm always speaking, Lord, my wife and I, she's an heir together of the grace of life. And so I'm going to treat her as an heir together. Lord, give me wisdom and understanding that I could be the best husband, so forth and so on. So whatever it is, I'm always speaking the word. The word is what's going to put us over in life. And so this, this passage, haven't you known, haven't you heard that the, the everlasting God, the creator, the Lord of the earth doesn't faint, he doesn't get weary, and there's no searching any understanding, and he gives power to the faint. All of a sudden, he takes this, this, this being, it talks about in verse 28, that this is God, this is everlasting God, this is Lord, this is creator of heavens, earth, the universe, and everything, and, and he doesn't ever get tired, and, and there's no searching in his understanding, and he doesn't faint, and then all of a sudden it brings him that seems way out there and untouchable to, to us, and he says, he gives power to you. That's how much he loves you, friend. He gives power to the faint, and to them, to them, this is how much he loves you. To them that have no strength, he increases strength. You have no might, he increases strength. Wow, he's not untouchable. We're talking about a God that is touchable, so touchable that when you and I call him, he puts himself in us. And then all of him, self, is available to us. So that means I don't have to pray the power down from heaven, the glory down, no. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Jesus said, the same glory, Father, you've given me, I've given them. We have the glory of God in us. Wow. This is some good news today, isn't it? Gosh, even the youth faint and get weary. So even the natural men that they take their protein and they work out and they exercise and they do this and they do that, they're still going to fall. There's going to be things happen in life, friends, that causes things to not work out in the natural, and even the best of them are going to fall. But God said, here's what you do. Just join yourself to me. Go ahead. My yoke is easy. My burden's light. Remember Jesus said that? So do what this says. Join yourself. And what you do when you join, it's kind of like uh, my wife's car recently. The battery went dead. Needed to get a new battery, right? And so I took this this box that I have that has a built-in battery, it's a jumper, right? And I took it over and, and I joined it to the battery that was dead. And you know what it did? It exchanged. <laughs> I mean, in a few minutes time, the dead battery had enough power to start the car and the battery that had full of power was half power. <laughs> what happened? An exchange took place. That's what Jesus is wanting us the cool thing about it is that we never drain Jesus. <laughs> you will never. That's why you read this in the context. He never grows weary and never gets tired and faints, even after he's exchanged his strength with you. <laughs> he's still got plenty, plenty of power. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Even you and me, when we exchange strength and we, what, mount up? You may have heard, if you've ever been in my meetings, I said it's time to soar with the eagles instead of flounder with the turkeys, right? You've heard me say that. Well, this is why right here God says we can mount up with wings as eagles. And then, bless God, we can soar. And the rest of the verse then says, I can run and not be weary. I can run the race that is set before me. I can run and do what, thing, what things God has called me to do. And I can walk day to day the things that I need to do in life um, to help my wife, to help your husband, to, to, to get the finances you need, to pay off, whatever. The things I do, I can walk and not faint. That's powerful. That's powerful. In fact, here's what we're going to do because we're running out of time here again. Let's make a confession here today. Let's close making this confession, all right? So, so say this after me. Say, God lives in me. Come on, I want to hear you say it. Say, God lives in me. Say, the Almighty One. The Creator lives in me. Come on, say it. The Creator lives in me. God has put His life in me. God has given me the free gift of eternal life. I have the life of God 
in me for eternity. Come on, I'm saying it slow enough. You, you repeat it after me. Say, I have God's life in me now. I am full of God. I have God's life. God Himself is living in me now. Say, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? God is for me. So it doesn't matter who's against me. God is on my side. Come on, say it. God is on my side. I'm on the winning team. Yeah, you are. God never fails. Come on, say God never fails. And He never loses. I'm on His team. God and I are a winning team. We cannot lose. Say, the Lord is on my side. Say it again. The Lord is on my side. Now let's say it together. The Lord is on my side. Guess what? That means I'm not losing. I cannot lose because God would have to lose. I, I'm going to win. I'm walking through this test and trial. I'm going through the fire, but I'll not be burned. I'll go through the waters, but they'll not overtake me. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm going over, not going under. Hallelujah. Well, we'll pick this back up next program, friends, and, and go on to something else that you have. We need to get into some more things because we've been in this one for three programs now. But it's so good. It's so true. And it, I know it's blessing you and changing and helping your life. Hey, we always have things at the end of the program that can, you can order for your spiritual enrichment and to help you grow in the things of God. Go to our website, but get in contact with us. Let us hear from you. Partners, thank you. Those of you that have been supporting us, and if you want to, man, hook up. We'll hook up with you too. We sure love you. Have a blessed day. I call you blessed in Jesus' name. Do you know yourself? Not the person the world says you are but the saved Holy Spirit empowered believer that you really are in God's eyes. At times we all struggle with our identity, ability, and purpose in life, but God's word is full of his descriptions of who we really are in him. Listen to Dr. Hutton quote the Bible scriptures on who you are, what you have, and what you can do in him. Build and strengthen the very foundations of your faith enabling you to believe and therefore speak all that God has created you to be to have and to do. To order in him scriptures, go to LarryHutton.org or call 888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others you'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org, or you can call 888-887-WORD.